Welcome to the Flash Performance Garage Walmart Edition. I'm in the oil change aisle getting my oil change supplies and I noticed that Walmart has scan tools in that same aisle where the spark plugs and wrenches and stuff are. But this is the one that caught my eye. This is a Hyper Tough HT200. So this is a Bluetooth version of a scan tool and it is uh, it's less than 50 bucks but I was reading through the information on it and you can actually get full access to all modules for one vehicle line so I'm gonna pick this up and we're gonna do a review on it Welcome back to the Flash Performance Shop. I'm excited to try out this HT200 that I picked up from Walmart. Now, don't make the same mistake that I did. Make sure that you actually open the package because inside of there, you will see a quick start guide. This quick start guide can be used to do all of your app install. So I actually found a video that Autel put together because they are the manufacturers of this tool. So I will put that in the description below and I will also link it up here at the top in one of the cards. So I used that application to be able to download all of the app and everything that I needed to put onto my phone. Now, the first thing that I did was I went to my wife's Toyota to scan that one because it had all kinds of codes on it. Because of the last service that I did, I had to unplug a bunch of stuff. So I used my one free application that you get on this tool on my wife's Toyota. So the way that this is set up, if you look at the package, it has one free application by manufacturer that you can choose. You can choose BMW, you can choose Chevy, you can choose Toyota, Honda, whatever it is. Whenever you choose that one manufacturer, you get all those different vehicles, whether it is a Toyota 4Runner or a Toyota Highlander or a Toyota car. I can't think of any of them right now. Anyway, all the Toyotas, you get to scan all of them from that one manufacturer. You also get generic OBD2, which means you can scan pretty much any car just on the check engine side for free, no extra cost. I have two different vehicle manufacturers in my driveway. I have Toyota and I have a Chevy. I actually have two Chevys. I have this 2002 Chevy Duramax diesel and I have a 2015 Chevy Volt. So I am going to purchase an additional application to be able to add on to my HT200 to be able to scan and figure out why my ABS code is on in my diesel truck. To do that, let's go to the app. Again, I didn't do anything special to get to this point on the app, but follow the instructions that Autel put forth on how to use the tool and how to set it up. So if you watch that video, you're gonna be at the exact same point that I am. So now I have the application downloaded and you will see that I have EOBD, which is gonna be your generic OBD2. I've already taken care of that one. But if I go down here to Toyota, you'll see that it is downloaded and unzipped. Now, whenever you do the downloads per manufacturer, it's going to take you back to the app store to be able to download that. The reason being is because the app store and iOS store, they don't allow you to download apps within an app. You have to actually go back to the app store to be able to do that. So don't get mad at Autel or Walmart because you have to download another app. That is a Google and iOS issue that they make you go back to the app store to download. So if you look back at my main screen, you'll see that I have that green Diag Asia button. That green Diag Asia button is for my Toyotas. Now I wanna do my Chevy. So let's go back into the app. And I wanna to go to General Motors. If I go down to General Motors, I can click on that and it says a secondary app for normal diagnostics. Please go Google Play. Opte. I'll do that and I will install. Now, while that's installing, I want to let you know what's going on on my truck. I have a 2002 Chevy Duramax diesel. This is a one ton truck and I have an ABS light on. So I want to figure out what's going on. Can this tool do it? Can a $50 tool diagnose my ABS? Let's find out. Now that I've purchased the second app, I bought GM so I could do this truck and my Volt, of course. We're gonna go ahead and go into GM and I'm gonna do automatic selection. Now automatic selection usually works on 2008 and newer vehicles. It will work on some older ones. So I always try it because I'm lazy. We're gonna read. Of course I have the key on and the OBD2 dongle plugged into the OBD2 port. There's my VIN, we're gonna click okay. 
This is a federal emissions truck and it is an automatic. 2002, 66 diesel, yes. Okay, select that. Now I want to do an auto scan. I can go into each individual control module if I want to, but I want to see a tow health picture of anything else going on in this truck. I know it has an ABS light on, but what else is going on? So we'll do an auto scan. We're 100% complete and I have nine modules that I was able to read. And you can see that I have quite a few codes going on. So the next step is I can go into each one of those individual modules and read the codes if I want to, but I don't want to do that. If you go to the bottom and slide that towards the right, you'll see one that says report. We're gonna select report and that gives us a full health picture, for lack of better terms, of the vehicle. And you can see as we go down here that in the four wheel drive module, I have a left front wheel speed sensor, a left front wheel speed sensor, a left front wheel speed sensor. And I go down a little bit farther and I have in the class two data link, a left front wheel speed sensor, a left front wheel speed sensor, and a left front wheel speed sensor. I think I have a bad left front wheel speed sensor. So let's check that out. Let's see what's going on with that. Now I can save this as a PDF if I want to or email it to myself or even wirelessly print if I have that option. And you can use this as a pre-scan, post-scan tool if you want to. We'll go ahead and push escape. And now we need to figure out what's going on with the wheel speed sensor. If I go in here and look, I found my issue. My wire for my wheel speed sensor apparently got rubbing on the rim and cut my wire. So now, Looks like it's time for a new wheel speed sensor. I don't have the wheel speed sensor here to fix it, so I'm gonna show you how to clear the code once I get it fixed. At the very bottom of the app, you'll see a button that says Quick Erase. We can Quick Erase, and that will erase all codes in all modules. If you're working on something like a Ford Explorer and you have to change the battery out, it sets a code for a loss of communication or loss of power in, in every module. So this makes it a quick and easy way to be able to clear all those codes. So we're gonna go ahead and do Quick Erase. And it'll go through all those modules and erase those codes. And if it's a hard code or a code that comes back, that means it is an instant failure. It doesn't have to be driving or rolling or even running. It's an instant failure. So that is something you definitely have to either fix or take it to a shop and let them know what's going on. So now I have all my codes are clear, but here's a couple other cool things that I have found with this app. So let's go into powertrain and we'll go into live data. But did you notice that you can also see freeze frame data? Freeze frame data, if you're not familiar, that is the information that is set whenever a code goes off. So that is all the live data that pertains to that specific code whenever that goes off. So we can see if we have a code, we can see that freeze frame data and figure out were we going fast? Was it hot? Was it cold? Was it just starting up? All that information can be found in freeze frame data. Let's go into live data. And I want to see engine live data. And now it breaks it down in a couple different systems. We got engine data, engine data two, and fuel system. I just selected engine data one because it was at the top. Now the key is still on in the truck. It gives us a little information here. Okay. <clears throat> so engine RPM, desired idle, coolant temp sensor. If we want to graph that information, we click on that little wrench and then we can put it onto a graph and then we can click back. And now that puts it as a graph and we can actually put a couple of different graphs on the screen at a time. So now I got two graphs on the screen. Now, if we go up to the top and select edit, you can see all the different ones that are selected. If you want to see them all, you can have them all checked. If you want to see specific PIDs, you can select just the ones you want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect all, and then I can go through these and I can click that I want to see the APP sensor, I want to see battery voltage, I want to see the crank position, and I want to see if my mill is on. And now I can go back 
and only those ones that we selected are going to show on the screen. I want to see my APP graphed out. I want to see my battery voltage as a gauge. And I want to see my mill counts as live data. So we have a lot of options with this. That's, that's pretty cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and back and select escape. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and escape all the way back out. I've done everything I want to do there. So let's escape back. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes, I am. Pretty powerful for a $50 scan tool. Not bad. Let's see what happens on the Chevy Volt. Can it work on a hybrid car? Let's get the truck out, pull the Volt in. We went from that super noisy diesel truck to a, to a completely silent electric hybrid vehicle. Same idea, it plugs right into the OBD2 port, nothing special about that. Let's go ahead and grab our app. I'm gonna push the home button. Are you sure you wanna exit diagnostics? Yes. We're gonna go back into GM and we're gonna do an automatic selection. Notice in the top right corner that it's the VCI has a green check mark in it. That means that the phone has connected to the VCI on on the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and read the VIN. Now the car is on. I have the ignition in the on position. It read the VIN, 6631, that's me. 2015 Chevy Volt. Is that correct? Yes. Now I got some things going on with the car that I still haven't figured out yet. So let's see if a $50 scan tool can read the codes on a hybrid car. We're gonna do diagnose, auto scan, this one might take a while. Let's speed this up a little bit. We've reached 100% on our scans. Let's see how many modules we got. 24 different modules on this 2015 Chevy Volt. And you can see that we got the hybrid powertrain control module one and two. Uh, electronic parking brake control module, airbag, transmission, we got them all. So let's go back and do a report and see what all these codes are. Slide down here to engine control module. We have a hybrid powertrain control module issue. We have a left front impact sensor, a right front impact sensor. So those are airbag codes, drive motor inverter temperature, uh, pack coolant performance, hood ajar switch. Okay, so actually what I did was I replaced the cooling fan assembly in this car and to do that I had to disconnect both airbag sensors. I had to unhook the hood ajar switch. So a bunch of those codes are, are nothing codes because those are stuff that I have already fixed. Now I can clear those codes out. So let's do the same idea. We're gonna push escape. We're gonna do quick erase and we're gonna go through and erase all the codes in those modules because I know what a lot of those are. I'm trying to fix the hybrid control module on this car, and those are now just in the way, but I need to be able to see the data without those messing it all up. Now, as it's going through this process, I wanna point out a couple of things. You'll notice that it says auxiliary transmission pump, battery charger control module, battery energy control module, and they just have exclamation points in them. Uh, the reason being is because those particular modules can set codes, but they don't have any logic in them. They report through another module. And most of the time those are reporting through like the hybrid control module or this air conditioning one transmits through the hybrid uh, the HVAC module. So that's what that means. So be careful when you see those, don't automatically think they're not communicating. Uh, on some vehicles, they just communicate through another module. If you go into those, you can see the ECU information. So you can see calibration IDs and some basic information about that module. So now that we've cleared all those codes out, you can see the engine control module still has two locked in it. So it does have hard codes that I gotta try and figure out. So we'll go ahead and escape out of that. It's a pretty cool process. 
But wait, there's more. I found other stuff. I am going to push that home button up there at the top and we're gonna click OK. Now at the top, you'll see a button that says service, the blue service button. Now, most of these cars are coming with electronic parking brakes, or if you have a Volkswagen or a BMW and you do an oil change on it at home, you need to be able to reset the oil life reset and the service interval. Well, if you go into service, you'll see we have oil life reset, electronic parking brake, battery management reset. So if I replace a battery in the car, I can do the BMS reset. And I had to do this on this Chevy Volt because I had to replace the battery on it recently. So we can do the BMS reset. If it's a diesel, you can do the DPF regen, uh, steering angle sensor, throttle calibration, it, ton of headlight calibrations like on BMWs, just saying. That's pretty cool. So we'll go into electronic parking brake and I already have GM because that's the one that I had paid for. Uh, we'll do automatic selection. It'll read the VIN. That's my VIN. That's my car. And I want to do hot function parking brake control module. Now, once I'm in this, let's say you're trying to do brakes on your own car at home. If it has electronic parking brakes, you have to tell the car that you're doing a brake job. You have to put it into brake service mode or you have to retract those parking brakes. So parking brake cable replacement procedure, if you're replacing that cable, because this is motorized. Uh, parking brake cable service release. So if I am, if it's stuck, maybe the computer is stuck, I can tell it to release and parking brake calibration. After I get done doing the brake job, I need to recalibrate it and tell it where those brakes are. So we have to do that calibration. So this tool can do it. I am over impressed with this $50 scan tool that I bought at Walmart. Uh, to be able to do reading clear codes in all modules, live data, graphing, and service functions for under 50 bucks, that's a, that's a pretty killer deal. I'd say make sure you go check them out. Uh, go look at it for yourself. You can go to walmart.com. It's an HT200. You can go to Walmart store and check it out also. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. All kinds of options. So you can actually use this for a pre-scan, post-scan report. Snuck up on me.